Generation Tech, the weekly video cast for your inner geek, bringing you the hottest tech news from around the world. Brace yourself, the show's about to start. It's Generation Tech. Here's your hosts, Rich Nieto and Matthew Burrows. And what is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 30, big 3-0 of Generation oh. Tech. And I'm joined by my partner in crime, Mr. Matthew Burrows. <laughs> What's up, dude? What's up, Rich? <laughs> Looking up, spiffy there with your little button up all the way to the last button. You know, you got forbid dude. you unbutton that last button. No. No. It's, it's not casual Friday. It's formal Friday now, all right? Well, then you should have put That's on a, a tie. Trend. You can't You can't put that without a tie. All right, semi-formal Friday. Damn, this kid's fashion backwards. Holy crap. Anyway. <laughs> Dude, this isn't a tie wearing shirt, you know? I know it's not, but anyway. So he's going to sit there with his entire buttons buttoned the entire right, show. I'll unbutton the top Thank button. you. I mean, Jesus Christ. It's like, so. Letting everything breathe, you know? Yeah, you got you to let that breathe, you know? Let the bush stick out of your <laughs> chesticles. Dude, my dad does that. <laughs> he's like, the fans. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, well, you know. You gotta, you gotta shave that a little bit. Anyway, that's the topic for another show. Maybe man cave chatter, uh, maybe down the road. But anyway, it's Test Generation it. Tech, and this week we're gonna do a little bit of a different show. We don't have anything that we came into uh, pre-planned, so we're just gonna wing it. Normal conversation, and uh, it was CES last week. Yeah. And let's start off with that a little bit because I, I mean, it's kind of late to be going nitty gritty into CES, and I honestly, I, so did you see anything that kind of piqued your interest with CES this year because um to me it it seemed like a lot of the same the last couple well, of years i guess we could sum up, sum up CES real quick uh 4k tvs and quadcopter drones <laughs> that's about it that's all the companies are really throwing out there for us and we saw a couple 8k tvs which were interesting which is kind of pointless but as i said we'll probably get into that later once we start talking about the tvs and stuff which i definitely want to get to so yeah, I mean, that, that's what CES is all about these days. Though. It's TVs oh, yeah. and, and phones, pretty much. It's not anything exciting. There's not... I mean, there's a couple new innovative things, like Razer had a couple devices, like streaming, game streaming things. But it's all stuff that's been done before, you know? It's not a brand new product. It's all, yeah. like, rehashes or upgrades and stuff like that. Maybe a little, a little feature that might be new. Yeah, um, you know, with like TVs, last year was a lot of the curved stuff, you know, curved yeah. TVs, OLED screens. Now it's kind of like 8Ks being previewed and stuff like that. Um, yeah, but there's nothing, there's no crazy thing like holy shit, I'm so looking forward to that in maybe like three or four years, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, 4K content is very limited right now, and the fact that they're already doing 8K stuff, it's kind of like, why? <laughs> but yeah. this year, um. I guess we'll kind of jump into it. Uh, they, I did see any 3D televisions. That's kind of like been wiped off the uh, the face of the earth a little bit. I mean, there, it's very minimal amount of TVs that are offering uh, 3D as like a big feature, um, which is good. But we also saw the f like one of the first um, AK TVs that I saw. It had glassless or glassesless. It's kind of a mouthful. Glassless. <laughs> it is glassless. Yeah. No, because that one that would be talking about. I think it's glassesless. No, it's glassless. Oh, okay. Three um, uh, D technology, which would be really cool. Uh, and everyone said that it it was a good touch. It wasn't like overdone. So that's exciting. Um, I mean, to me, three D is kind of it's at this point it's dead for all intents and yeah. purposes. Um, for that that style of three D, especially. But I feel like if we get into this glassless 3D, I th I'd definitely pick it up. You know? Well, yeah, that's the whole thing that's kind of holding back 3D as we know it right now. Yeah. You have to uh, – first, there was the, the the active 3D where you actually had to have battery-powered glasses and stuff yeah. like that. And I that's what I have for both that's my like 3D Sony, TVs. Right? Sony and Panasonic. And well, most of them, Samsung, everything had that at, at early on. And it's a pain because you have to change the battery sometimes. It's the, um, the little watch batteries that they use. Yeah. So it um a lot of times I wouldn't use it for a while and they would just die out. So I kind of when I actually wanted to use it, they would be dead. But now now the new thing is the passive technology where it's just actual regular glasses with a film on it, no um, circuitry inside of it. 
But even yeah. that, it's like you got to pull out the glasses when you want to use it. It's like it's a whole ordeal, in my opinion. You know, instead of rather where you sit down on the couch, you just watch TV and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's so many barriers around 3D and you don't you just don't see it being pushed out a lot. You know, um, the only reason I have it is because the TVs I wanted just happened to just have happened. 3D. I didn't actively seek out a 3D TV. And you, you know? rarely use it. No, I yeah, know you don't you don't use it at all in this off in your office because no. none of your devices support it. Well, they do, uh, like for movies and stuff. The like Xbox that. and PS4 do. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, um, but I, early on, I would use like my PS3 had the DVD, uh, the Blu-ray 3D technology um, through a patch, and I yeah. would once in a while watch a, a, a Blu-ray on on a 3D, but it just it became annoying, and it's not. It doesn't look as good, obviously, because yeah. it's halving the resolution. And it costs much more money. Uh, one of the movie stores, local movie stores, if they have a like a 3D Blu-ray section of the movies, and it's like five, ten dollars more just for that 3D feature. It's like it's not really worth it. I'd rather just sit there and watch it in uh, full HD. You know. Yeah, that's that's another reason why I stopped buying 3D Blu-rays because it was costing extra as well, and I yeah. wasn't using it. So I would rather just buy the regular Blu-ray standard and. That's it, you know. Especially down the road, when I don't feel like I'm I'm gonna watch it. But that's that's why they're not pushing it as much, cause yeah, a lot of people um, have the same sentiment, you know. Now, did you see the see-through displays? Those are really cool. Yes, um, those look sick. Like for like, if you had a up end or upper end uh, kind of like, uh, I don't know, gourmet restaurant or something. The, how they had it set up like a little window where you could look into like a vase of flowers or something and then you had your logo on the front that was sick well yeah but you have to say even in, in a home setting you know you could have mm-hmm. it maybe over some kind of painting in your house so that when you're not watching tv it's still a decorative piece but and maybe not Although like that it wasn't, but... it wasn't color so oh, okay it was just black okay um well down which the is road. why branding i think it would be cool because you know you could you could put the colors behind it that'd yeah. be kind of like if you had a uh i don't know um what are the things that are, are they called boutiques where like uh women go for like dresses and stuff yeah i get boutique Weddings. shops to the like that yeah that'd be kind of cool i don't know like that's what i imagine it being used for like out front like a barber's pole you got a boutique sign or something yeah, that's true so i think that cool. yeah but this like we said there's not a lot at ces that kind of blew us away um, yeah w- was there anything else that kind of stood out i mean um, to me, it was it was um, when we went into CES. I remember saying that um, TVs obviously were going to be a big thing. A couple cell phone mm-hmm. things, and I and I one thing I did say that was different was that there might be smart appliances being shown, and there were a couple. You yeah, know, I don't know if you saw. I saw um, a dishwasher that yes. looks pretty interesting. Is is this the one that you're thinking of? It has like a cube of water. That goes over all the dishes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's interesting. It's like it's. They say it makes it much cleaner, which I know dishwashers are very annoying and very tricky. Like if you don't use the right soap, if you change soap, it like gets gets weird in there. And I I don't know. I'm not like a, a big appliance buyer, but you know, well, all yeah. my dishes clean. I mean, you, you are young, so I don't think you're in the the, the you know the shopping for appliances mode at yeah. this point, but. Yeah, I saw like the t- the the fridge the fridges where oh yeah with the time and the temperature on the front yeah also they some of them you know how they have the the ice makers in the front some of the yeah. new ones actually have coffee makers built into that little thing like a Keurig or like an actual brewing I think like a Keurig type thing mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm guessing I, they didn't go too much into detail but that'd be cool with a fridge if a fridge company like Frigidaire or something partnered with Keurig and had like a built-in Keurig system. Yeah, it, it looked pretty cool. And then, you know, there's going to be like tablets built into the fridge mm-hmm. where you could take it off and use it around the kitchen and stuff like that, maybe to help you with recipes and stuff. Um, yeah. And also, it, it's going to be t- um, tethered to your internet, so you could actually order stuff through your fridge, like if you're running out of milk or whatever. See, I feel like all this stuff is just proving that we're going to need to bump up the cap for the internet. <laughs> any. <laughs> Just eliminate data caps, you know. Well, I I think data especially caps especially for in home Wi Fi. Yeah, I think data caps are just gonna get worse. Like right now, I don't have one, but knowing Verizon, they're gonna follow suit with all these other uh, internet companies like yours, Comcast. Three hundred gigs, man. That's it's ridiculous. Like, you feel it's like all right, three hundred gigs. It's it's all right, but if you watch any sort of Netflix, YouTube, if you're doing 
anything online for at least something every day that you'll go through the 300 gigs like no tomorrow if you play games you get these 20 gig downloads for games and stuff man that kills my internet cap see it's one thing to cap uh, a mobile connection because that's like mostly when you're out of the house like, all right i'm on the go i don't really yeah need you're space. not using a lot of stuff but in your house that's I could not imagine having to monitor my usage in my house because, you know, there's so many different things that I use that are connected oh, between yeah. the gaming systems and there's all the computers, the, even the hue. I mean, no one use a little bit, but still. I can't keep my printer on because it takes up data <laughs> at the end of the month. It takes up like three gigs of data if I leave it on for a month Wow. because yeah, it self patches and everything. See, it, there's just too many things to actually like account for that. It's hard to even keep track. I don't even know what I I could use. Maybe three hundred. Yeah. But do, do I use half a terabyte? I don't know. I have no, you're probably no idea. probably close to five hundred. Probably, because that's what we about uh, we go through. And it's like ten dollars for for like uh, every five gigs after oh. I go over. Yeah. So that's a lot of money, you know. Well, you actually showed me the thing with the Obama. He was do, he was talking about during yeah. the State of the he, Union. He wants to get, um, he wants to get like a gig up and down like the fiber the google fiber everywhere in the united states and um he's giving the opportunity for each state to uh put that in as a bill if you guys want google fiber to this state then you just pass it and eventually it'll make its way to you so that's something that i think we should all look forward to in the future probably not near future because uh it's going to take a while because i know maine doesn't even offer fiber internet um, because it has to go through the ground and everything, which is a bit tedious. But um, you know, I think I think down probably in ten years or so we'll see fiber dominating the market. Well, the whole thing with this is that there are a lot of state level laws and legislation yeah. that um restricts competition in, yep. in certain markets. It creates a monopoly in in each state. Yeah. So basically, everyone as everyone knows, you have one cable company in your given area. And maybe you have maybe a DSL company or FiOS and as an alternative because they're not a, com a cable company. And then you'll have maybe Dish or DirecTV for yeah. another option. But in terms of cable, there's only one option. They they can base the price whatever the hell they want. Uh, but what they're trying to do is allow multiple companies to compete in, a, in given areas. So that way they'll compete for pricing, they'll compete for packages um, and internet tiers and stuff like that. And yeah. in the long run, you know, they're not enticed to have data packs because um, data um, caps, rather, because yeah. if if one company has data cap and one doesn't, you sure as hell know most people are going to go to a company without the cap. So most likely both will go suit without a cap. So I, obviously competition brings a lot of benefits to, to customers in the long run. So um, oh, yeah. I'm not a big Obama fan, but I think this is one thing I can stand beside them on. Um, internet in this comp in this country is just atrocious when you compare it to other com uh, countries around the world. Yeah, is Obama's done next year, right? Yeah, twenty sixteen is. Uh, Damn, it's already been his new... second second term. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, but yeah, I think if he pushes for that before next year, I bet I bet we'll kind of get some movement on it. Um, and a couple comments, I guess, we, that are associated with this. Uh, Xfinity2013 says, it's easy to counter the data cap if you have a PC and such set up to limit data. Um, I'm sure you could limit yourself. You could just be like, oh, okay, I've done 250 gigs this month. I need to slow it down. But it's a lot harder than it see, uh, feels or seems. Um, let's see. My cable company just throttled my YouTube feed. Now I get to watch about 25% of this cast. YouTube doesn't pay service fees to my cable provider. Sucks. Well, I have that through Verizon because I notice... A lot of times at night, especially when I watch want to watch videos, they they load really slowly, and I have a really fast connection. There's no reason why I should be going that slowly, but uh, there's something with like Geezer said that they don't pay uh, subscription fees to, to YouTube or something like that, so they get a slower connection. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of this net neutrality crap that yeah. you know everything else will load just perfectly fine, but YouTube, nope. Certain times I'll have to put it at 360p. See, I feel like that's. Um... I feel like that's the same with Comcast and Twitch, because uh, I can't watch a Twitch stream unless you are a like a premium Twitch streamer and you get that extra bandwidth going to your stream. 
Right. Um, because I, I can't watch anyone under 10,000 subs. <laughs> it's just like, it just won't load, you know? It just buffers and buffers and buffers. Yeah. And I have an 80 and 80 and 20 uh, speed. So, I mean, I should be able to stream or watch a live stream easily. Yeah, they, they definitely give preference to the higher uh, higher users. Just like on YouTube as well. Like if I watch, yeah. uh, I don't know, uh, a Vitaly video, you know, obviously it's going to stream a lot fast. It's going to load a lot faster than if I watch like uh, Zach's vlogs or something like that, you know, where it, yeah. it always chugs if I try to watch one of his vlogs for some reason, um, <laughs> especially. But yeah, so um, I, I just think down the road, it's going to take a long time for the infrastructure to be there to to uh, give everyone such a fast connection, obviously. And the one and the one reason that a lot of these uh, Asian companies, uh, companies, Asian countries, or even Asian, uh, or wow, <laughs> European countries have such fast connections is because they're smaller countries. So there's less uh, land to cover and a lot easier to actually wire them with faster connections. The US is such a huge country in terms of oh. land mass. So it takes a lot of time and a lot of money, capital, to actually put the infrastructure in place for fast connections. Although the United Kingdom, I mean, for an example that I know of that has really crappy internet, UK, um, everyone over there, they have to pay a very high premium to get a decent speed. And everyone's paying what we're paying right now, and they're getting maybe 5 down and 0.5 up, you know? I've I've seen that many times with people that I've known over over the years who are from the UK. Yeah, well, the UKs I I feel like they don't have a fast connection overall either for some reason. Um, it's really it's really country by country specific. Um, you know, wh- whereas like the Netherlands, they have a really fast connection overall. Or uh, um, what was it? Sweden. Yes. They have the like the ten gig by ten gig plans and stuff but they have to pay so much money because they pay up to like 50 percent tax yeah there. so that's a lot of money <laughs> so um going back to ces was i mean the, um, there was a couple other things like the, the weird thing is the best the, the the thing that got best of ces was a razor product right yeah they've won it like consecutive years so, last year i believe it was that um that computer that you could pull out each section. Oh, right. Which we haven't seen the light of day yet, right? No, they, no, nothing. Not even any announcement on it or anything like that. And this year it was a set top box made by Razer. It's basically like an Apple TV um, Gaming alternative. Stage. It's like a um, Amazon Fire, Fire TV. Fire TV, like the gaming with the controller. It's exactly that, just Razer branded. Um, before I go into that, I just want to talk about. When do you feel as though 1080p is going to be outdated, like completely? It's going to be a while because because it, we had what 240p in 2003. That was or well, not that, even was 480, that was 480i interlaced. Yeah, but I mean, um, not widescreen. I'm saying no. Still, it was 480, but three yeah, four, it was three. four by three aspect ratio. Yeah, so like that was around forever. That was around since the beginning of TVs. We had that aspect ratio. Right, and. Uh, I mean, 1080p is nice. It's technically full HD, but we're blowing past full HD at this point. So when does full HD move up? <laughs> so when you term, when you talk in terms of actual TV and cable and stuff like that, we haven't even touched 1080p. We're yeah. small channels of 720p. Some yep. are 1080i, um, but none. Yeah, but none are 1080p. So and it takes a lot of bandwidth to, to actually use that, which is why mm-hmm. they they reluctant to do that. Um, gaming, we're just reaching 1080p. Um, yep. Blu-rays have been 1080p for a while and stuff like that. Um, but I, I don't think 1080p is going anywhere anytime soon. I, I yeah. Even though you're seeing 4K and even 8K, um, those won't be standards for a very long time, especially when it comes to cable TV. And even when it is, it I still think 1080p will have a place um, everywhere. You know, it's not going to be like, Oh, like 10 years down the road, that's it. You know, everyone's on 4K. Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 and even if it does happen, it's gonna, like I said, it's going to take a really, really long time. So, yeah. Um, I think cable needs to get to 1080p first before they even look at 4K, you know? Well, that's the thing. I mean, when they're, they're going to 8K, that's doubling 4K. That's four 4K monitors on the screen. Yeah. And 
we're not even at our full potential with 1080p yet. So there's obviously going to be a cutoff point where we stop limiting ourselves uh, with bandwidth and charges and overage and all that stuff. And we just kind of go full blast. Just let it happen, you know? Update everything. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't get the whole thing about the 8K. I mean, I understand... It, to... Everyone said that it looked really good, though. Oh, I imagine. I mean, if you have the content for it, yeah. I'm sure it's amazing. But let's get to 4K first before I even yeah. think about it. 8K, you know? Yeah. That's why I'm holding off on a 4K TV. First of all, I want to see the content available all over the place. Not mm -hmm. just uh, you have to buy a specific Blu-ray to watch it, which are really rare. Not every movie comes in 4K format. There's a couple things on Netflix that are 4K. Um, I know um, um, Breaking Bad. Yeah, that's streamable in 4K. That's like one of the few things on Netflix that's streamable in 4K. But so you're gonna blow through your internet. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I can't. I can't even imagine what kind of connection you need. Um, oh. Yeah. But it's weird because I actually saw um, somewhere on Twitter that there's gonna be an NBA game broadcasted in 4K. Of course, the Knicks are gonna yeah, be the involved. Yeah, the Knicks. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder how how many people are actually gonna be able to watch that? Because first we obviously need a 4K TV. You need a 4K capable set top box yep. provided by a 4K capable provider. Um, and you need to actually have that 4K channel available to you. So I remember back in the day when, when HD was brand new, um, you needed all those requirements. You needed HD TV, a set top box. Um, you needed a, uh, your cable company to give you those, provide you those channels. Yeah, and I remember watching an NBA game for the first time in HD. It was like its own channel. It wasn't like TBS or ESPN. It was its own channel, like the number two thousand or something like that. Yeah, and it, it blew me away. You know, obviously it looked amazing compared to everything else. Yeah, but I, I feel like that's the same requirements. Like it's going to be one in a million type of thing. To, uh, people that are going to actually be able to watch this thing. Yeah. Um... I know we're getting – we have a set-top box coming from Comcast. That's a 2560 uh, native – or 1440p native, and then it will upscale to 4K, um, which is interesting. I'll have to see how that looks. But I can't see – yeah, Jacob, we saw that in your uh, comments that DirecTV offers 4K. Uh, yeah. But I wouldn't go anywhere near DirecTV. Their internet's horrible. Well, yeah, uh, you only get DirecTV for the – for TV. the TV, and then you yeah. get something else for another Direct TV. I feel like it's more for a corporate place, like a restaurant. I've had Direct TV. It's good for if you were into yeah, sports. Yeah, we had it too a while ago, but it's like it was never really like polished off, you know? It's a, It was all right. But um, like, but yeah, I, they offer 4K, but I wonder like how many channels are actually in 4K. I how many people own 4K TVs who have direct TV? I don't think I remember reading into it actually. There was no channels in 4K, but they actually all um they had on demand movies in 4K, which is that mm -hmm. that's all they ha had to offer. Yeah. Which is not enough for me to spend that kind of money on uh, for for limited content like I said, you know. I'm real I'm willing to wait this out because even if I do get a 4K TV, I'm going to be I'm, there's nothing I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be upscaling yeah. 1080p content if that 1080p yeah you know? i'd say 2016 will probably be the year to buy 4k i don't even think that honestly i think it's really going to be longer than that well i feel like at, okay i'll rephrase 2016 will be the year that you can get a decently priced 4k tv well you can get a decent priced tv right now but yeah but the I mean, thing is I don't know. it depends what kind of content consumer you are are you a yeah. netflix person are you a uh, cut from cable companies because then you're gonna i feel like those people are a lot quicker to get 4k content yeah um if you're a cable guy like i am a cable guy a cable watcher like i am you're going to be lagged behind in that in terms of that so that's why i'm in no rush because i am tethered still i for me i watch a lot of sports and there's no internet option for me because even if i get like the mlb package or the nba mm -hmm. package you can't watch local games you could, I could watch L.A. games all I want, but no New York teams. Like, they're all blacked out if you're in that state. So huh. there's no options for me in terms That's of that. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, I would have I cut the ties a long time ago from cable, honestly, if I was able to use uh, those services. Yeah. Hunter says that he has 1440p monitors. I didn't. I thought he had, like, older well, monitors. Yeah, I thought he had less. So that's what mine are, 1440, but they're, like, half a 2K. But one other thing I wanted to talk about, um, I'm not sure if it was mentioned at CES, but Project Aura, 
Do you remember that? It's the modular phone. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't see anything about it at CES, but yeah. Um, the I guess for people who don't know, it's the uh, phone that we mentioned very early last year. Um, like one of our first couple episodes, I believe. Uh, it's a phone that you can switch out the components of it on the back, kind of like slide them in. Yeah, like so if this, it's a it's a modular device where you can hot swap the the screen, the camera. Um, instead of upgrading the f- entire phone, you just upgrade each component. So let's say there's a better camera that's released, you can just take out the camera portion and p- to put back in the new camera part. Or if you want to put in a better battery, whatever it is, CPU yeah. even. Um, but we, like I, like Matt mentioned, we talked about it last year, but, um, it was actually talked about this week and it's supposed to actually be taking a lot of, uh, headway recently. And I think early 2016 is where it may be released. And later this year, it's supposed to be like really vamping up in terms of, uh, like beta testing and stuff like that. But the cool thing about this now is you can hot swap all these components before yeah. it was like you had to turn the phone off and then swap it. But on the run, you can literally take off the screen and put in a new screen and stuff like that. So obviously um, not like the battery and the CPU, but other components. Well, like even the, the battery, even the battery. Hot, so well, there will be like you'd a, have to power it off first. No, because there will be it'll run in a really low battery state. I was reading, and there's a little battery put into the actual modular portion itself that holds all the components together. So that's all bat a whole. Um, power on the phone while you're swapping the batteries that's interesting yeah so literally everything can be hot swapped on the run but here's here's my whole thing with it um obviously it's early on this is do you first of all do you think this is the way phones will be going in the future do you think this will no. be hold on i'm not done yet hold on Call me both sets. <laughs> number one do you think this is the way phones will be going in the future instead of get a phone like an iphone and maybe a year down the road or two years, you upgrade the entire phone instead of upgrading the component. Second, if it is the way of the future, do you think it will, it, it's, um, what, no, first, let's go to that one first. Never mind. Okay, one. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so my answer for this, I always have the vision, uh, which you kind of see in futuristic kind of sci fi videos. There's always that one company. That kind of um, has a dominion over everything. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Kind of like Skynet. All right. I know that's a really cheesy cliche. No, but um, it is. It's true. You know what I mean? Like one company, all cell phones. Big brother. Yeah. That's how I picture everything going eventually. It's kind of like that the theory that we'll never have, like in 10,000 years, we won't have different races. We'll just be one kind of mixed race because eventually everyone's just going to intermingle, you know? Yeah. And I feel like that's what's going to happen. Companies buy out companies every day. Um, you, you'll see Facebook and, and Instagram acquiring all these smaller companies, picking them up. And it, eventually it just gets to the point where these companies, they'll sell, I guarantee any company will sell out for the right number. Well, Except for a yeah. couple. I mean, like, I, I mean, if Apple uh, was offered 10 times its, its worth right now, they'd probably sell. <laughs> If they were offered a thousand billion dollars, I don't even know, so a trillion dollars, right, for their company right now to switch owners or whatever, or if if Android sold the rights to Android, you know, right. to to Apple, so they could intermesh some parts and just throw out what they don't want, I could definitely see this going on uh, within probably not any time in our lifetime, but eventually, you know. I'm sorry. I, I failed to see where this <laughs> relates to the topic. I'm sorry. <laughs> the question was Do you see do you see that the the this project Aura type no. phone? So I eventually just see I just see one phone that everyone will have and upgrade every year. So or... so you think that it'll be like it'll be like a PC where it's a standard format and companies can make individual parts and you can take like an apple camera or yeah a, a, like a samsung cpu and stuff like that so that's what yeah you, okay and that and there will be one company that owns like the chassis and you can get all these different things so like what if they had a chip that you could put the os so you could have android 
uh, Windows or, op- or iOS, you know? Yeah, that, that's interesting. Now, one company doesn't even have to make the chassis. Each yeah. company can make the, the, their own chassis, but there could be a standard Fully format, though. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. how there's this standard format for PCs. So say there's, there's a standard eight components that you need for each phone, okay? Right. And you can compri- you can have that comprised up of any company that you want. You could have a Samsung camera and maybe has the best on that that side. And then these companies will be uh, instead of selling the devices themselves, they're selling the camera. You know? Yeah. No, I that, can definitely see that being a thing. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I never really thought of it that way. Instead um, of just Microsoft, you know, it, it'll out. be basically the PC market is now like how you build yeah. a custom PC. Um, yeah. You just buy your own parts and intermingle them each brand whatever you want and you make like an ultimate f- comp- uh phone basically yeah. um and 100 percent customizable like you could put your own lens on your camera if you wanted to i don't know yeah. That'd be kind of cool. so i i like that idea um the only problem i have with this concept is when you when you make each part modular you're adding bulk to the overall device. Now, if yeah. you look at an i, uh, I don't have my iPhone next to me, but you look at this Samsung Note. You know, it's all one big, you know, big slab of plastic. You know, it's all into one piece. It doesn't have separate compartments. So this is as thin as it's gonna get. If you if you think about this type of other phone where it has compartments and you inter- interchange things, it adds it adds bulk to it because you have to have connector parts to it. You know, you have to have uh, connection parts and sliding uh, connectors, you know, that type of stuff where it just adds onto the extra uh, bulk onto the device. So I feel like, especially early on, um, it's going to, it's going to take, we're going to take a step backwards in terms of phones because you see phones now, they're so thin and then they have to play catch up, you know? Exactly. So they're going to be, they're going to become thicker with this project R type phone no. And maybe eventually, you know, the the it'll get be able to get back smaller to where they are. But that's my only concern: taking the step backwards, um, just to eventually, hopefully, catch up down the road. Now we're seeing these see-through screens. Like, what's preventing us within hundred years from going to see-through phones? Just the screen itself, you know. Um, we found technologies before by accident. I'm sure we'll find something else by accident. And uh, I mean, it's all just. Time is our only limit, you know? Yeah. No, and you see a lot of these futuristic movies, like I think Minority Report might have shown like the, or, uh, the, the see-through phone and stuff like that, where it's just a piece of plastic-looking thing in it. Star it be, Trek. Yeah, There's stuff like that. You can see right through their screen. Yeah. Like, that's right around the corner, I feel. Yeah. And it, and Geezer actually made a good point. This type, the, the method that you pointed out, where each company makes its own components and stuff like that, and they're into changeable um it would benefit smaller companies because if you think about it the the price to get into actually making a phone is yeah. astronomical and and you you see that samsung and apple they have a huge footprint in the marketplace and if a small company comes along and they want to be a niche uh component maker they want to just specialize in let's say cameras you know yeah or they want to specialize well, that's what in I'm the saying. battery maybe, okay so like maybe you can get the samsung and apple maybe that's the premium cpu os maybe that's what you're going to be paying a bit more for but then you can get these kind of smaller brands they're going to offer a a bit less of a product or maybe just a little bit different of a product and you'll pay a bit less you're not going to get that premium name what if canon made camera lenses that you could attach to your phone like it made the camera part but then you could have fujifilm as another option which would be a cheaper option uh, I, I think all these would play out. So it's it's kind of like the same thing, as you said, with the PC community. You'll get the people who don't want to spend a lot. They just kind of want functionality. And you'll get the people who like the premium products. They like the premium names and the premium features. Well, it's not even that. When I, when I talk about specializing, they could actually excel in that component. You know, they, yeah. they, just, speci- they just worry about the camera. And they make a really crazy look uh, camera, but they're not known for anything else, you know. So yeah. that's all they're known for, and you can upgrade to their camera. Um, and and these also make a good point because, like, let's say you don't want a camera on your phone, or you don't want uh, a gyroscope on your phone, stuff yeah. like that. You can put whatever components you want into this phone and and make it your own. You know, like if you don't want a camera, you could put something else in it that maybe someone else might not have the space for. 
uh, if they have the camera, you know, that type of thing. So like it's, you can make it a photo processing machine or a strictly battery saving machine to have two batteries in it yeah. and limit gyroscopes and cameras and stuff. If you just want a phone or you want to put know. like four, four batteries in it. Yeah. You know, just if like... you, it, it's all for what you want to do. If you want two GPUs in the thing, why not? What's limiting you? And yeah. the other thing that's a negative about it is there's no 4G um, antenna currently for yeah. this it's only 3g now there yeah. are plans obviously to make an lte uh, yeah. antenna in it but as of right now it's only 3g which is really weird and and right now um samsung and a couple other products i believe um lg is also doing the same they're rolling out new antenna systems so you know that might be right around the corner um uh, implementing 4g with this new antenna system yeah so i just thought it was really interesting you know and it's actually something that's not um, a concept that's actually going to happen just in a matter of time. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not sure if I would be an early adopter to such a phone, um, especially like the first one I'd or two generations. I'd wait second, third gen at least. At least. I mean, they would really have to start. You it's kind of like Windows Vista. You don't like, <laughs> it sounds promising, but it probably won't be, you know, right yeah. away. Especially like a go if it, it's a Google product. So yeah. um, they like, like their Google Glass, you know, it's, and they data. just canceled that. I guess we can talk about that next. But well, uh, they canceled the uh, the testing. Yeah, but like you know, th with that it um it looks promising, but you don't want to buy the first generation. Yeah, you know, it's, it, at this point, it's useless, kind of. So, um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that, but long term. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, so Google, I guess a quick little topic. Um, Google's kind of rearranging. Uh, their their firm, I guess, um, and the Google Glass project. Uh, they're moving it to a new he headquarters, and they're also giving it a new kind of um, director um, for the project. And they're kind of taking it in a little bit new uh, direction. I believe they're actually, what appears to me, they're kind of tightening it up to um, possibly do a consumer release pretty soon, uh, probably two, two or three years, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um... I, I wouldn't buy one anytime soon either with those yeah. things. Um, there's nothing there's nothing that makes me want to buy it. Like, there's no killer feature. I mean, it's it's a real novelty item, honestly, at this point. It's just a cool factor. But yeah. in terms of actual usage, um, I don't feel like I would actually care f for using it that much. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I've seen two people. I've se two people in real life I've seen, like, with them. And they're just kind of walking around with them, kind of flaunting them around, you know. It's not really a useful tool at this point. But you never know. They could adapt this into a different technology, um, maybe fighter uh, pilot helmets, um, something like that. Because they have a bit of an older uh, visor technology, you know. Because they, yeah. they do have, like, an ultra Google Glass on their helmets. <laughs> they yeah. can see every single thing about their plane. Every like a HUD and everything. Yeah, they have a whole HUD on their helmet. And what if they limited it to this little thing here? That would be a bit bit more of a space saver, you know. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it, it's like wearables in general, you know. It's just they need uh, they need some kind of functionality that you makes them want to buy them. Yeah. <laughs> I think eventually it'll get there, but um, I, not I just, anytime soon. Yeah, it's too limited right now. But the, yeah. the last thing I want to talk about is um, is Razer stuff. So they they mm -hmm. got the 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 best CES product with their I forgot what the the set top box is called. Um, um, and because of that, they got the best of CES. They held a sale, um, fifty percent off sale. If guys haven't heard that they did what was it Monday? I think it was, and. If you, if you signed up, you got a code and you were able to buy one product, 50% off. Yep. And, of course, there was an issue. You know, they, they messed up There's a up lot the of codes. issues. Yes. Uh, first and it's of all, the Razer Forge TV, sorry. Razer Forge TV. Uh, yep. First of all, a lot of things sold out early, which if you wanted one of the Chroma devices, um, you were screwed out of luck. The website was slowing down. Um, it crashed. Obviously, it wasn't loading. And... Um, they messed up the code, so they flipped the codes around. So I was, I had something in my cart. I was trying to buy it, and my my uh, code wasn't working. and didn't give me an error code, so I got pissed off and stopped. Um, and the, the CEO eventually said that they screwed up, so they're going to redo the sale later on in the month. Um, Only said people had codes prior, yes. so you kind of screwed now. But if you didn't get the code, right? So, but, yeah. so I wanted to get the Chroma uh, Black Widow Chroma, 
Mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing I wanted to get. I don't really care for much Rager stuff, but it looks pretty cool, you know. And I could have bought one of the other Black Widow products, but um, I really wanted the Chroma for all the lights, and I was I, I really wanted that. And if I couldn't get that, um, even though I had fifty percent off on anything else, I just held off. Maybe later on when I do the sale again, I'll get the yeah. Chroma if I'm lucky enough, but. Uh, I know, Matt, you, you didn't really care about getting anything, but was there something that you would have gotten? I mean, I have the Black Widow now. That's really um, the only product that I'm interested in them. But I do want to, I did want to try out one of their um, Kraken 7.1 headsets. Those looked pretty cool. Uh, they have a white forged edition, which looks pretty sweet. Um, which is curious. I was kind of curious why they called it a forged edition and their new product is the forge, um, which is kind of a weird thing but um yeah i i had their mouses in the past i'm not a fan of them at all with mac yeah they look really cheap and uh we have both they definitely um, logitech mice and they're they feel like a lot better quality right? yeah for sure i because i got the ouroboros which is their most expensive mouse that they offer um and the plastic is completely cheesy feeling uh especially in comparison to logitech because i've owned Four Logitech mice. I own the MX. I own G five hundred. Um, you've owned Logitech mice as long as you've gamed on the PC. I'm uh, sure. That's the only gaming mice I've used is Logitech. I, I love Logitech peripherals. Uh, yeah, they're definitely a quality brand, and they're not as expensive um, for what they offer. Like this G five hundred mouse, you can get it for like thirty bucks now. I'd say it's easily the best gaming mouse that you can get under fifty dollars. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised you actually wanted to try the Kraken because for me, I personally would not use anything. I, well, I've audio never, related. I've never felt the Kraken. Everyone says that they're really good headsets. Uh, I've never even like held them, so I don't know build quality. I don't know any of that stuff. Well, so. even if build quality is good, I feel like just the audio fidelity from them is just subpar. I don't, I, I just can't trust them. So, just like the mic. Well, I guess you can talk about their microphone, right? Yeah, the Siren, I think it's called. Yep. Um, Horrible. It's it's supposed to compete with the Blue Yeti. It's very similar looking, actually. It looks exactly like one. It's supposed to compete with the Blue Yeti. It's a hundred dollars more. Yeah, more than a hundred dollars. It's like a hundred and twenty dollars more, and it sucks. The Yeti blows the water out of it. Yeah, it's um, it, it's and the Yeti's a, bad. <laughs> it it just I I think it depends on your voice because I we heard one person that actually sounded pretty decently um in a YouTube Blunty. video, Blunty. But that he has a very monotone and very dry voice, you know. Yeah. So maybe and it depends on your voice, but even still, when he got close to the mic, it was crackly and it was crack. A lot of the videos where I heard test, it was really crackly for some reason. Yeah. So I just I can't trust Razer when it comes to audio stuff, mm -hmm. especially if it like so somewhat of an audio file. If you don't really care about how it sounds, you just like how it looks. Go for it. By all yeah. means, it looks amazing in terms of uh, design, but um, for quality, I can't. I can't trust them for that, especially yeah. the money that you're paying for their audio yeah. stuff. It's like two twenty, I think, after taxes. It's ridiculous, but yeah. But you can 